Hi, this is Merrill with Tax Tutor. In this video, I wanted to go over business records and how business records work when it comes to doing taxes and your tax returns. So now, first off, your business records should be separate from your personal records. So I'll put up here, separate from personal. Now, the reason for this is when the IRS comes to audit you, if you do get audited, you need to be able to show them the difference between your business records and your personal records. So, uh, an example here. Uh, years ago, I had a client. It was a brand new client that, that, that we had that we worked with, and they ended up getting audited by the IRS. Uh, their return that we didn't prepare, it was prepared by their prior uh, tax preparer, their prior CPA had prepared it. And uh, so that, that return got audited and we had to help them through that audit, even though we hadn't prepared the return, we helped them through the audit. And this individual was running a construction company and that construction company was a sole proprietorship. So it was reported on schedule C of his personal tax return. He did not have separate records for his business. His business was run through his personal bank account. So guess what happened in that IRS audit? The same thing that happens in every IRS audit. The first thing, couple, uh, some of the first things the IRS asks for is number one, a copy of the tax return, which is odd because they're the IRS. You'd think they would have it. <laughs> I asked them that one time. I says, you're the IRS. Don't you have a copy of the return? And the IRS auditor told me, Oh, the IRS or the, the tax returns are kept in a separate department of the IRS. It would take us months to get copies of those. So I thought that was a little odd. So they ask for a copy of the tax return when you get audited. And then they ask for a copy of all the bank statements for the period. And so you give them the bank statements. And then is what they do is they go through those bank statements and they add up every single deposit that goes into your bank account during that period. They add them up, they get the total number, and then they compare that total number to the amount of income that's reported on your tax return. And if you have more deposits in your bank account than is reported on your tax return, you now have to explain to the IRS why you had more deposits in your bank account than you had uh, reported as income on your tax return. Uh, so for this individual, uh, the business was not separate from the, the personal banking. Everything was all mixed together. So when we gave him, when we gave the IRS the, the, the bank account information, the bank account records, they went through and they totaled everything up. And sure enough, he had more deposits than was reported as income. And then we had to go through line by line and explain to the IRS why there were things deposited in his, in his bank account that were not included as income. Included in those items were, um, he said, oh, you know what, my dear sweet grandmother, the guy was in his 40s or 50s at the time, I don't remember, he wasn't, wasn't young at all, but he says, my dear sweet grandmother to this day still sends me $20 every year for my birthday. And that $20 deposit was a check from my grandmother for my birthday money, which wouldn't be taxable. Uh, then another line item was, uh, another $15 reimbursement. Um, this was several years ago. And so he said, I said, you know what? We went out to the movies with some friends. We paid for the tickets and the friends paid us back. So there was $15 deposit into his bank account that his friends had paid him back for movie tickets. And so we had to get into that level of detail. And had he not remembered that his grandmother sent him money or that his friends reimbursed him for movie tickets, he would have had to pay tax on that money on that income on that deposit because he couldn't explain to the IRS why there was a difference. So that's the very important reason to keep your, your business accounts separate from your personal accounts because the IRS uh, is going to be, to be looking at all that stuff very, very heavily and very closely. Um, so you're going to want to open a bank account that's going to account for all of your business transactions. Um, you don't want to pay non-business expenses from your business bank account. Um, that just runs into to trouble. So we'll put that here. Um, no personal expenses. from the business account.
So what happens when you run your personal expenses through your business account is again, when you, if you get audited by the IRS and they look at that and you start going through and they start seeing all these personal expenses, even if you didn't deduct them, it makes them immediately suspicious of everything that's included in your, in, in your accounting and on your tax return. If they see personal expenses coming out of a business account, even though you didn't deduct them on a return, it's going to make them want to look even harder because they say, okay, you know, maybe they caught these personal expenses, but what else? What else could be in there? And so the IRS is gonna start going through things more and more with a fine tooth comb. They're gonna be asking for more documentation, more information, because they think that they're going to find something in there that you forgot to pull out as a business deduction. So just avoid having that. There's a whole legal issue um, about, um, you know, personal liability that, that could come into play. I'm not an attorney, so I, I can't really to go into that or talk about that, but there could be legal issues of, of doing that as well. So I'd say consult with attorney on, on that sort of thing. Um, and then you only want to charge business expenses uh, to a business credit card and use a personal credit card uh, for personal type things. So we'll say, um, we'll say separate, Oops. Let me put that a little better there. We'll say separate credit cards even. Because again, if you're running business and personal through one card, the IRS is gonna look even harder and see if, if you're doing something odd or something funny there. Um, now you can transfer funds between your business and personal account. That's fine, you know, if you, if you have a lot of income in your business and you need to get that, that money to your personal to pay your personal expenses, then, then make that transfer, do a distribution, do a draw, do something like that. Discuss that with your tax professional, make sure that you're not gonna run into basis issues or something like that, but generally that, that's okay to do. If your business needs money, you can transfer um, income from your personal uh, into the business as a loan or equity or something like that, you can talk to your tax professional and, and help you through that. So that, that's fine as well. Um, now, when it, when it comes to saving money on taxes, documentation is the key to everything. Uh, so let's put that down here. Documentation, document. Okay, so if you never document everything, then, or you, if you never document anything, then how are you going to be able to deduct it on your tax return, right? So if you are given $100 at the beginning of the day and you go out during the day and you spend that $100 on business type things, you know, maybe you take somebody to lunch, a client or somebody to lunch, maybe you buy some stationery or buy something for the business, you know, that $100 is all spent on the business, but you took it in cash you never got a receipt, how are you going to be able to deduct that on your tax return? You could make some accounting records or things like that, but it's, it's gonna be really difficult to really document that and show that. If you get audited by the IRS, they always want to see proof of payment and that comes through showing your bank account records that you actually paid for it. And then they wanna show the proof of the expense. They want to see a receipt. So there's generally two pieces of documentation that go along with every expense. It's one, the receipt that went along with it. And number two, the proof that you actually paid it. So if it got put on a credit card, you'd show that credit card got paid. If it got put run through the bank account, you'd show that it went out of the bank account. So that way the IRS gets comfortable that you paid that expense and that it was a valid business expense. So sometimes people say, oh, you know what, I, I charge everything on my credit card and I'll just use the credit card as my documentation. Well, that's fine, but let's say you go down to Walmart, right? Walmart, you could buy something that is for your business and you could buy something that's for your personal, right? You could go into the grocery section and you could buy milk for the family and you could go over to the, uh, the the, the stationery and the, the office supplies section, you could buy something for your office. They could both be put on the same receipt and, and then uh, you, know, you could buy those together. Uh, you, know, you shouldn't, you should separate those or you could even separate those out. And then if you get audited and they would say, hey, hey, look, I charged um, $20 to Walmart on, on this receipt here, and it shows right here on the credit card that I paid that. And the IRS would say, well, great, what did you buy? And you'd say, oh, well, 
Ooh, was, was that the milk I bought or was that the, the stationery I bought? What, what did I buy with that? You, you, you'd have a hard time proving that. But if you have the receipt that says, hey, I bought stationery, then the IRS gets more comfortable. If you don't have a receipt, then it's hard to prove that you have a valid business expense uh, for, for those things that you did. Now, in talking about documentation, I want to discuss um, an IRS audit, a couple, two IRS audits that I went through. Uh, the first one was extremely painful, very difficult. The client was not very organized. We didn't have everything together. The audit took over a year to go through. We had to come up with uh, vehicle mileage logs and we had to go back to the bank several times and they had to find their, their records and we had to get receipts and pull them together and you know, some receipts were missing and it just took a very, very long time. Over a year, the client ended up paying a lot of money in taxes and a lot of money in fees to be represented to the IRS. It, it, was, it was very difficult. I contrast that to another IRS audit. Um, in this case, it was an attorney who was extremely organized. When the audit started, he went and he got a binder and he took the information document request from the, from the IRS and he put it in the front of this binder. And then he had a tab for every piece of the information the IRS requested. And it was all tied out and it was put into a spreadsheet form and he had receipts and he had proof of payment and he had everything all together. That IRS audit started at 9 a.m. and was done before lunch was over. Uh, cost you know maybe a couple hours of my time to do it. Uh, took the client a little extra time, but that IRS audit was said done, closed. No change happened to that client's records. He didn't owe the IRS anything else because he was organized and everything put together. So for you with your business documents, your records, be as organized as you can. Have as much information as you can. There are things out there that say if you have an expense under $75, you don't have to have documentation for the, 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 you know, things like that. I say document everything because if the IRS comes looking, the more paper, the more information you can throw at them, the more comfortable they're going to get. If you start going and saying, well, I don't technically have to have a receipt for that because it's da 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 or this, that, and the other, it's just going to drag it on longer. They're going to try to find somewhere else to find information. They're going to pull things. You know, they have all, they have a lot of power. They can do a lot of stuff. So I say, go in with as much information as you can, give them as much documentation as you can get that IRS over with as fast as you can and get that IRS auditor out of your life and out of your hair and move on with, with better things. So hopefully that's helpful as we go through those business records and, uh, and, and uh, helps you to, to see some of those things. So uh, thanks for watching. At Tax Tutor, we believe that bookkeepers are really great tax preparers, that a client is better served by having the same person do their books and do their taxes together because that person has a very good understanding of the entire financial situation of that client. So we've developed a program that helps bookkeepers add tax preparation to their business to teach them how to prepare taxes and to get comfortable preparing taxes. If you are interested in learning more about adding tax preparation to your business, visit us at taxtutor.com.